Hey guys, Billy Davidson here with Davidson Pressure Wash and Painting. In this video, we're gonna show you how to pressure wash a house start to finish. Thanks for hitting that subscribe button. If you hadn't already, go ahead and do it. We definitely appreciate each and every one of them. So guys, in this video, we're gonna show you how to pressure wash a house start to finish. All right, guys, so what we've elected to do on this job is put a chemical application of about 1% sodium hypochlorite, along with some surfactants. If you're interested in finding the perfect chemical ratio chart, go check out BillyDavidsonVIP.com. So the way we're gonna achieve our 1% sodium hypochlorite application on this particular project is through downstream injection. Downstream injection is a phenomenal way to apply chemicals to a structure. Our draw rate is about one to 10 ratio. So we got approximately 12% in our container. We're gonna be drawing about 1% of that. So we're gonna probably get between 1% and 1.25 actually contacting the structure. We've attached our downstream injector to our outgoing pressure right here and then a quick connect, a pressure hose to it. All right, guys, another thing, we're using an IGX 800. It produces about 14 gallons per minute, which is phenomenal, and it produces about 3,500 PSI. We're not going to use nowhere near the power that these machines are capable of doing to pressure wash this house. Basically, we're going to use these pressure washers to give a soft wash method to this home. We're gonna kind of walk you through the process step by step. You may have a different setup where maybe a pull rope start like a GX390 or even something smaller. That still will do the job here, but may take a little longer. So that may be the only thing that you'll see different between what we're doing and what you're gonna be doing. All right, guys, this is the home that we're gonna be pressure washing or soft washing, however you wanna term it. Obviously, we're not gonna use any pressure on this house whatsoever, but we're gonna use our pressure washer to soft wash this house. And All right, guys, basically what I usually do is extend my hose the furthest away I can safely and still use a downstream ejector. Usually, that's around 150 to 200 feet, but with our equipment, we can go approximately 300 feet and still downstream effectively. Your equipment may be a little bit different, so you need to test it before you start applying the soap. Maybe do this at the shop or at home before you even do your first job. See how long your hose could be before your downstream injector stops working properly. One reason it will stop working because there's too much back pressure. That downstream injector needs a certain amount of pressure to operate properly. And if you got too much pressure hose on it, it's like blowing through a very long straw. The resistance will build up the longer your hose is. In addition, this water has to make a 90 degrees turn when it comes into here to go out your wand. This also is a bottleneck point and will cause resistance all the way back on the downstream injector. So if your downstream injector is not drawing on 200 feet, maybe try to detach the gun and just use the ball valve to apply your chemical. I have seen that at work in a lot of cases. Because in our case right here, we're immediately looking at problems that might occur for us. Hazards, plants, hot windows, hot surfaces to touch. Right here is early morning. We've already went and put our hand on it, so we know it's not really that hot to the touch. So we can start applying our SH solution. If it was really hot to the touch, at that point, you might want to cool it off with fresh water. But in this case, it's not necessary. So again, I'm at the furthest point that my hose will reach. I'm also looking for things that the customer may own that I could damage with my spray, like wind chimes, that sort of thing. Plants, obviously, screens, that sort of thing. You never want to hit anything with pressure on this. And if you're using anything more than a 1% sodium hypochlorite solution, you really need to take a lot of time to pre-wet all these plants. But again, in our case, I think we're gonna be okay today. All right, guys, we're gonna release our burst pressure. Always be mindful of your burst pressure coming out of your wand. The moment you pull that trigger, you have all of this pressure and flow built up in 200 feet of pressure hose, and it's gonna wanna release in a hurry. So this burst pressure can be thousands of pounds of PSI, more than what your machine actually is rated for. So point this thing off to the side. Don't point it at a window or anything that you're not intended to destroy, because it will destroy. Once we release our burst pressure, then, we're going to start applying our sodium hypochlorite solution 
to the wall area. All right, guys, right here, we're starting to apply our sodium hypochlorite solution. We're just gonna work our way from the bottom, moving up slowly, making sure we get an even coat on the entire surface. And also watch your wind conditions as well. If your wind conditions are strong, you could apply just with a different nozzle and i'll show you that here in a second as you see there i was using a really wide fan pattern that still will do your downstream ejecting now i'm going to use a little bit tighter fan pattern or a straight stream if our wind conditions are really strong and that wind is starting to fluff out your solution in the air and carry it to somewhere you don't want it to be you could use this method as well all right guys this is a j-rod this is a downstream injector nozzle you've seen them most downstream injectors have a wide variety of different fan patterns and streams of water that you can use for downstream injecting. So here I have selected a straight stream of water to reach some of the higher parts. If the wind is blowing, this may be something you need to do, again, to keep that sodium hypochlorite from drifting off into wind to other parts that you're not ready to clean yet. Again, we're gonna release our burst pressure. And it would be the same application working your way from the bottom using circular motions if you're using this type of spray pattern and that's how i would downstream this wall all day long now you may see this chimney or this fireplace coming up out of the roof up here again if that needs cleaning we could set a step ladder up here and use the same nozzle to reach it All right, guys, we on the side of the house, as you just seen, we did the back side. Now, one thing you wanna keep in mind, keep this in mind very carefully. Do not let that SH dry on that back wall of those windows. I have an internal clock sort of ticking like the old quarterbacks when you hike the ball, they know within a certain amount of time they need to get a release off. Same thing here, don't get distracted. Have that little internal clock going along if you need to set a stopwatch go ahead it's really easy with our smartphones five to ten minutes in the shade is all you want now if the sun was shining back there more like three minutes sometimes even less than that sometimes i sit there and babysit it the entire time i do not want my chemical solution drying on a wall or the window so keep that in mind this is a reason why we have to charge what we charge because we can't get in a hurry doing this if we did we could leave spots all over these people's home, the windows, the walls, the gutters. It would look awful. And we could spend hours and hours out here with a scrub brush on a ladder with them watching. It's embarrassing. I had to do it before. And I don't want you to have to go through that. So don't let your solution dry on a wall. Again, right here, we're going to apply from the bottom up. We're going to release our burst pressure. All right, guys, we back and we're ready to rinse. Now, I get this question a lot. What if you apply your sodium hypochlorite solution and you still have some mold and mildew present? Well, at that point, you need to stop and reapply again. Again, not letting it dry in between applications. Now, there are times you may have to spot treat with a soft bristle brush or a small pump up sprayer, but by no means we wanna come in here with anything more than about a one and a half percent it could damage these plants in a really quick way. Another thing you wanna make very careful sure of is these, again, these windows do not dry with your sodium hypochlorite solution on it. In our case, one application is all we needed today. We got a little bit lucky, but sometimes that happens. But oftentimes we do have to apply two applications using the downstream ejection method. If you do, again, just make sure that it doesn't dry in between coats and keep an eye on things. So we're ready to uh, do our rinsing process. I'm gonna go show you a little bit of that and tell you a couple things to be careful around windows. Again, guys, we want to make sure we have our burst pressure released off into a safe manner. Do not release your burst pressure at this window. A couple reasons that burst pressure could break that window 
Also, if you have a failure here at this quick connect, which happens often, this will come out as a projectile moving several hundred feet a minute for a short distance. This is a short distance. This J-Rod could be sitting on top of their bed in a matter of one second. So we don't want that to happen. We are released our burst pressure. Now we're starting to wrench from top to bottom and circular motions is really a good idea. I really prefer the circular motion rinsing. It seems to dislodge spider webs and things much easier than a straight stream like this. I think it hits it at several different angles simultaneously and it works really well. So guys, I do like to rinse from a couple different angles, like from the left and then putting my stream back to the right. I think it just gives you an ideal way to rinse. Some of these ledges and stuff, we can't quite hit from one angle or the other, so you can do it from both angles. I never like to rinse at a 90 degree angle, having my stream of water contact these windows or the wall straight on. So I like to have a deflection of my spray, usually at about a 45 degree angle when I'm rinsing. couple things you want to look at here is make sure you're checking these ledges. Sometimes there'll be the dirt divers getting under there, wasp nests, spiders, other type of bugs. So anytime you see a ledge like that, make sure you visually take a minute to check it. Now also we got these bushes right here. So we want to make sure we get kind of get behind there and rinse that to make sure there's nothing stuck to the wall. So we want to change our angle so we can also get a good visual on what's behind these bushes. Right here, guys, I'm using what I call the blade technique. I'm just using the far side of my spray pattern to contact the wall, not the entire spray. This does minimize any damage to the siding since I'm closer to the siding than what I'm really needing to be because I have to get behind the bushes. Another thing you can use is use this blading method to do window frames. Again, we just using a portion of our spray pattern to contact the wall, while the majority of our spray pattern bypasses and contacts the wall at a different location. You could also use this spray pattern displating technique to do small little window seals if needed. But again, you have to be very careful and go quick over it. So guys, right here, we're on the back side of this home. We're using a wide variety of spray nozzles to achieve a good thorough rinsing. If you don't have a high flow machine, you could use the X jet nozzle as well to do it. Just remember the X jet nozzle puts about 500 PSI out at the nozzle. So you wanna be very careful with the burst pressure there and the distance from the wall is very important. Usually with the X jet, we'd like to stay about six to eight feet away from the wall area if we're trying to rinse some heavily soiled areas or either spider webs or insect nest. Modern day homes use a wide variety of building materials techniques to achieve a certain architectural look. As a professional power washer, you have to keep in mind, usually during the design process of a modern day home, the exterior cleaning was not really thought about or planned for. So as a professional power washer, you have to know the correct techniques, have the correct equipment, foundation of knowledge, and the experience to do this work properly. And in addition, know how to charge properly for your services. Whether you're doing commercial or residential power washing and looking to grow your pressure wash business, please go check out my training page, BillyDavisonVIP.com. I've been in doing this for over 27 years professionally and have learned a few 
very exclusive ways to grow your pressure washing business ASAP. So guys, at this point, we're actually tagging some insect nests with our J-Rod. We use in the straight stream of water on about six gallons per minute. Our machines are rated for 14 gallons per minute, but we actually got to dial down to just below half power, right around 40% power. If you're using the eggs yet to rinse, you will also need to bring down your power settings just so the water does not impact the surface too hard. As you see here, we're able to reach two and three stories with ease with some of this equipment we have. Again, if you're using smaller equipment, you may need a step ladder to be able to set up in a position to get a nice angle of attack on some of these insect nests. All right, guys, we're back. Now we're gonna attack the front of this house and get this thing all cleaned up. A couple things I wanna talk to you about before we get started. All right, guys, this is a scrub brush, obviously, soft bristle scrub brush. This is something that you would wanna use on your car. Some thing that you would wanna use on this house as well. If you show me a power washer that doesn't have a scrub brush, and I'm gonna show you a failed business because you got to have a scrub brush on a job. Some guys say they never scrub anything. They're not gonna be in business very long in my opinion. So that out of the way, another thing I wanna to talk to you about is hot water. Not the hot water that you might be thinking about. So guys, right here, I've seen people kill plants and they had no idea what happened. They was using a 1% sodium hypochlorite. They were pre-wetting and everything else. Let me show you a little trick here that you may have not realized. I have approximately 200 feet a black pressure hose sitting out in the sun. If you take a break, this hose is baking out in the sun, causing the water to get extremely hot, well over 140, 150 degrees. You've probably done it before you turn a water hose on and briefly, you get that really hot water. I mean, it's like scalding hot. So imagine right here, we got probably a gallon, gallon and a half of hot, hot water in this pressure hose, because we just took a little five minute break. This water is heated up. I can feel it, it's all in a wand. Now, if I immediately start spraying this house and hot water contacts these bushes, it's going to kill some of the leaves on the plant. So think about that too. Release that hot water off to an area where it's not gonna hurt any vegetation. Then once you start getting cool water, then you can start applying your soap or your rinsing process. A couple things to keep in mind there. Now, I'm back to my downstream injection. So, it's gonna take it approximately 30 seconds for the soap to get to me. So, here we go. Again, I'm applying my soap solution from the bottom, working our way up. Also, as you see here off to my left, I have a door set. I want to make sure I do not get any SH on that door set. And we're going to talk about that here in a second. So hang tight. Here's our door set. We're not going to go in there with this power washer or soft washer or SH or anything like that. We're going to go in there with a couple scrub brushes kind of hand wipe things off and clean it. A couple of reasons there, I don't want to push water inside the house, which I know I'm not going to do that, but I don't want to soap RSH hitting that door. Surfactant RSH is not to be on this door. Hand wipe, that sort of thing, damp cloths, sometimes no cleaner at all, just, just water, a little hand wiping. If it does need some heavier duty cleaning, then you wanna make sure, do a little bit more investigation, see if it's a varnish door or a painted door, and then they use the appropriate cleaning soaps that are specifically designed for those products. Oftentimes you can check with some of your big box stores like Home Depot, Lowe's, Sherwin-Williams, that sort of thing. They can lead you in the right, the right direction on what cleaning product to hand wipe a door with. So keep that in mind, no, so, no surfactant or sodium hypochlorite. Now, that being said, we want to watch our wind conditions. We still want to be able to treat all of this around here with a sodium hypochlorite solution, but we don't want to blow it back into there. So watch your wind conditions and be very cautious about how your angles are being to apply your sodium hypochlorite to different structures around here. 
because even a little gust of wind can blow your SH back in there and contact that door and it drives on the door. They come out to hand you the check and there's spots everywhere. So guys, we've treated everything one time. Now, we see a couple things that is gonna be a problem for us, so we're gonna kinda go back and spot treat these other couple things. Now, so I'm actually watching their sun angle now. It's kinda behind me, but it will be rotating this way here shortly. I wanna make sure these plants are gonna be pre-wet, even at a 1% solution now. I'm starting to get a little bit more cautious because I'm getting back to the sunny side of the house. It's getting a little bit later in the morning, so it's starting to heat up. Hadn't rained in several days. A 1% probably wouldn't kill these plants, but it could maybe turn a few leaves brown. We've already done our before and after pictures and videos before we sprayed the first stop, drop of soap or water. But this is starting to make me have a little bit more concern. No panic attack here. Just want to stop, take your time pre-wet these plants for about five to 10 minutes, depending on the water flow you get in fresh, cool water is important here. And then continue to treat the home with your sodium hypochlorite solution. So guys, again here, I'm gonna release my burst pressure above the roof here line because I got things around here that I don't want my burst pressure to hit. And then um, we using a longer range or soap, long range soap nozzle on this j-rod to kind of give us a little bit of extended reach to get into some of the higher parts so right here we're pushing about six gallons per minute i got my machine on about 40 percent Guys, now we're ready to start our rinse and process. A couple things I want to talk to you about this. This could be quite important. Also, make sure you stay to the end of the video because we're saving the best for last right here. Again, if you're looking to grow your pressure washing business, check out the description. Click on that. There'll be a link in there to my website. That's some really exclusive training videos and courses that could help you out. I want to give a shout out to Jeremy out in Dallas, Texas that just joined our dumpster training course online. He's already doing really well with it. He's about 10 days into it and got four accounts. So shout out to Jeremy, great job. And hopefully we'll be working with him in the future on some other training courses. So right now we are ready to start rinsing again with our J-Rod. We got our machine on about 40% power. But also now this is something important to remember. Our 200 feet of pressure hose is full of SH and surfactant. So we need to make sure before we start rinsing that we got fresh water coming out the nozzle. Can't tell you how many times I've seen some of my guys do it and other people out there in the field start rinsing with SH and they think that they were rinsing with fresh water and they move on out to the area and then dinner again, your SH is drying on the windows and they have no idea what happened. So make sure you're getting fresh water out before you start rinsing. So I'm gonna release my burst pressure off to the side where it's safe. I know I'm still getting a little bit of soap out and I want to make sure I get no suds before I start my rinsing process. Alright guys, I can feel when that last bit of SH squeezed out of the spray nozzle here through our downstream injector just because it is a little bit different density than water. Over time, the experience will tell you when you're getting fresh water out, you can almost feel it when that bit of SH and surfactant pushes on through. If you know exactly what I'm talking about, go ahead and drop a comment in the box below. Let me know if you can tell whenever you're getting fresh water just by the feel of the water stream. Guys, I'm going to be looking at those comments to see who all you can actually feel when that SH and surfactant leaves the line. I'm interested in seeing how many of you have the experience to feel that different density coming through the pressure line. So right here, we're gonna start at the top and start our rinse process. Again, I'm using a long range downstream nozzle over fresh water only. And right here, you just wanna take your time. You're just using fresh water, so no rush here. It's not that big of a deal. And just methodically work your way from the top, very carefully making sure 
and watching the entire time that you're not damaging anything. Because you never know, there could be a soft spot on the home that you're not aware of, that the homeowner's not aware of, and even a very soft pressure like this could start to flake something up, especially if it's painted surface. So keep an eye on things the entire time. If you have some vents like that, you want to pass over them rather quickly. You don't want to be stuck on an a, a, a attic vent and just pushing water into the attic. Again, right here, I'm using probably about 60 or 80 PSI combined, very low PSI just to do our power rinsing. This is slightly higher than most water hoses. And what I mean by slightly, no more than about 15 to 20 PSI more than a water hose. So again, guys, we're working our way down very slowly. This is why we charge a little more than some of the other people out here. We're gonna take our time, do our work properly, and be paid for it properly. That's really important to you and your family not to come out here and be trying to work for 20 bucks an hour. In general, guys, cleaning residential homes and large residential homes like this, you do run a little bit higher risk than cleaning driveways. So you want to be into that at least at 200 to 225 per hour in pay if you're working with you or just you and a helper. Now, if you have a, an entire crew like I got that's fully insured, you want to be a little bit higher than that, sometimes even twice as much as that per hour. But with a crew like ours, in an hour, we can get a lot done really quick. All right, guys, right here, we want to start looking at the corner of these windows and seeing if any nests are forming. This is a little bit too much pressure to put into that corner, but I still want to use my soap nozzle. So I've got a couple options to do this. Again, I'm rinsing with fresh water through a downstream injector soap nozzle, but it's a little bit too much PSI to put on this glass. So either I can lower my RPMs on my machine or either just back up a little bit. Here, guys, I'm at least 10 feet away from these corners. And what I want to do, and again, in a circular motion, this is real important not to push water at a 90 degree angle to this window. Have a slight deflection of that water that lets the impact on the glass and the, the seams and the frames of the window. And just give it a really thorough rinsing. Usually the glass is the last thing I want to rinse when doing the wall. Because I don't want to actually have any debris or something flowing back onto the glass after I've done that rinsing. All right, guys, as you see here, we're back on this side of the house now. We're still downstream and using that method to apply about a 1% sodium hypochlorite to this wall area. We're getting a little more concerned than I even was a while ago. The sun is really starting to come out. We're about lunchtime right now, working our way around the house. So this has got to be pre-wet. There's no, no other choice to do it. Even though it's only 1% sodium hypochlorite, the sun has been baking on some of these bushes for the last couple hours, maybe even a little longer. It's hot, we're in the high 80s. It hadn't rained out here in probably several, four or five days. So all that keeping in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and pre-wet it. Uh, it. Takes another five, 10 minutes to do it and it's an insurance policy against the disaster. So take a walk with us and show you how we're gonna just pre-wet with a water haze. So guys, when I'm pre-wet, there's no particular way to do it, left to right, right to left, high to low, doesn't really matter. As long as you're putting enough water down, and you can't get in too big of a hurry here, because just what you see right here, this is not enough. You can imagine, we usually be getting about six or seven gallons per minute coming out of this faucet, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. So if we only dumping five gallons of water on these bushes, it's probably not enough. We want to get these bushes cooled off, get them hydrated, and it takes just a little bit longer than just a few seconds. So I've seen guys come in here and do their pre-wetting real quick, and they move on, and it's really hadn't been done anything. So you got to take your time with it. 
your customer deserves this service out of you and you know they want the home clean but they don't want all their bushes dying off the next couple of days as well so take your time do your pre-wedding don't get in such a hurry making sure you're charging enough for this and also telling your customer and some of your estimates this is what you're going to be doing just a simple text message with a price on it is usually not good enough usually i like to send an email with an explanation description of their very specific property not no cookie cutter email template for quoting it's something i just generally don't like to do now it may work for you it may not i don't know but i can close a lot of my jobs even at a higher price than my competitors by taking our time and just explaining everything we're going to be doing as you see here we've been pre-wedding for some good bit of time right here now these plants are nice and cooled off and hydrated but as big chris is applying his soap solution i'm still going to be putting down a little bit of cover fire is what i call it just to ensure that these plants that have been sitting out in the sun are not going to end up getting burnt or fried from our sa solution in addition always make sure that that water coming out of that nozzle right there has been cooled off because that black hose sitting out in the sun like today that water can get to some extreme temperatures and cook these plants all right guys we have applied our sodium hypochlorite solution as you see we were pre-wetting five to ten minutes before we sprayed our first drop of bleach and during the process i thought that would might be a good idea just to kind of put a little flow down while big chris was coating this with sh we only had to do it one time this house is not all that bad our customer gets this house washed quite often so that may be one thing you want to talk to your customer about you know let them know that sometimes once a year is too long sometimes once a year is not long enough you know that sort of thing so there's, ever, there's also been times that we've washed a house every three years. So it really depends on a lot of things, a lot of contributing factors that let you know when a house might, might need to be washed again. One is the amount of rainfall that you may get during the winter time or just early spring. Also, how much irrigation they have around the home. If all of this stuff stays really wet, like this is a lot of landscaping, not only you get the irrigation, watering the plants constantly but the plants are also wicking moisture out of the ground and it's airborne and it attaches to the house often and that could accelerate the mold and mildew process sometimes once a year is just enough sometimes it needs to be done sooner talk to your customer about that so again we're going to just go and rent from top to bottom in a circular motion right here we're going to use the open ball valve just kind of show you how that might go uh, right now we're running about six gallons a minute so this would be equivalent to about a 5.5 uh, gallon per minute pressure washer a four would give you a little bit less flow but you could still be done with an open ball valve especially if the house isn't as tall as this one like one storage one and a half storage open ball valve on a four gallon per minute machine is just fine so you either using your wand with a j-rod an x jet or a black tip on your wand it's all going to give you a low pressure application applying the solution and rinsing or either an open ball valve so i'm going to show you how we do the open ball valve method and uh, perhaps you can start adding this into some of your tactics Guys, also, you might want to take the opportunity to remember to cover up any electrical outlets. As you see here, we have some electrical services, but we just use in plain water and very weak sodium hypochlorite, so everything should be fine with that. But if you feel that you may be at risk, go ahead and cover those outlets. Sometimes we do it, sometimes we don't think it's necessary, but use your discretion upon that part of it. All right, guys, so as you see there, you just repeat that same process on all four sides of a house. Don't let it intimidate you. So long as you kind of have a process and a schedule as you're going around a systematically 
way of doing it. Don't kind of be back and forth because as you see here, like we washed this earlier this morning, but the sun is really beaming hard on this. We could wash this right now, but we would definitely have to pre-wet, cool things off as we always talk about in other videos as well. So you can definitely go down through the channel and find a lot of training videos that we put out. So be checking on that. Another thing I want to tell you about that's really important before we wrap up and go, this is a biggie now. Put these doormats back. I, I have been guilty of leaving them out in the yard. You know, it's kind of the end of the day. You're ready to get out of your wet clothes. You're tired. You're hungry. That sort of thing. But do a final walk around as we're doing now. Because you will find a doormat or something misplaced. A plant that you pulled out. Maybe the dog's bowl. That sort of thing. Good rule of thumb when I do with dog bowls. Before I get started, I dump the water out and turn it upside down. Before I leave, I rinse it out and fill it back up with water. Last thing we want is someone's animal drinking our soapy solution and getting ill from it. That would definitely not be a great thing to happen to you. So do your final walk around. Put the doormats back. Just take five minutes and inspect the house before you knock on the door and let the customer know that you're done for today. Also, we're going to be doing a how to pressure wash a driveway from start to finish. So please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you'll be notified once we get that video completed and uploaded. We definitely appreciate you watching our videos. Again, go to BillyDavidsonVIP.com. Check the description out for some other information I'll have in here too, as well on some of our training courses and a brand new promotional code. So go check out that description now, guys, and I hope to see you in the next video.